I hate to see you out of control. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Inception. This is because of the 10 year anniversary event that just happened at some of your local theaters. I went and saw it in the IMAX again for the first time and about nine years. It was very fun to see it again. It also came with this really cool like 15 minute introduction of Tenant, as well as a retrospective of Inception and Christopher Nolan talking about how he feels that at the time, because of the previous movies he had done, The Dark Knight, The Prestige, he had the capability of being able to make this film. And by doing this film at this time, was perfect for him in his career because then he was further able to explore the means of filmmaking that he wanted to try and do with films like The Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and now Tenet. And it's pretty easy to say that Inception is still one of the best movies he's ever made. Not only is it a creative spin on the entire heist genre to the point that some people don't even realize that it actually is a heist movie, as well as the perfect organization of practical and visual effects, Wally Pfister doing an absolute insane job with the cinematography in this film the absolute crazy lengths that they went to to really immerse you in this world in this scenario to the point where you literally cannot stop thinking about the ending because some people still are. I also started that line with, I hate to see out of control, because when this trailer first came out, my brother and I misheard what Joseph Gordon-Levitt said in that trailer. We thought he said, I need to see out of control, and we're like, whoa, what does that mean? Admittedly, the trailers for this film were so well done. The teaser completely blew some people away with in terms of its scope. Just seeing Joseph Gordon-Levitt going down a hallway, kind of flying slash walking as it's turning. And that still is my favorite scene in this entire movie, along with Hans Zimmer's soundtrack, Lee Smith's incredibly underrated editing to the point where I still don't understand how this guy got gypped. If you watch the film in its chronological order with splitting up the scenes, they almost match up entirely in terms of the actual aspects of how time works. As they further go down into the dreams, the editing still matches up with how things are proceeding, which is so impeccable. But the other part that I liked about this movie, which is what I'm wearing right now, actually. When I was 19 years old, I thought Joseph Gordon-Levitt wearing a vest was like the coolest thing ever. I got a lot of vests over time. Admittedly, I actually can't wear many of them now because of the weight loss. I tried on two other ones and they looked like giant garbage bags on me. Mind you, with this and like, I, I kind of look like a skeezy douchebag as well as a super villain. But Inception is just such a fun movie to enjoy and I still kind of get blown away about how this movie was not filmed with an IMAX camera. Due to the excessiveness of the scenes, particularly the hallway scene, building a giant ass hallway and putting a camera on a long pole and basically pushing it through and maneuvering it through. They weren't able to use IMAX cameras for a lot of the movie and I think Nolan thought that either I can use it for a large portion of the movie or I can't use it for anything at all. And you saw what he was going through with Dark Knight Rises because while he loved using the IMAX camera for that movie, you can tell that he wasn't able to film everything that he wanted to. Dark Knight Rises is more so, I feel, a camera experiment for Christopher Nolan in terms of what he could do rather than just being a trilogy ender. And in Inception is just something that people keep coming back to over and over again. It's been meme to death, it's been parody to death, as well as it just keeps being talked about, even though it's 10 years old now. The only thing I would say, and this is something that Nolan has done for a long time, is I always find it weird how bad his gunfights are. I swear that they never actually fire a fake round. They don't even fire like a cap or a, like a blast cap. They just put the noise in. It happens particularly in the first gunfight when they're in the rain in the cab. Like sometimes there are some bullets being fired, but other times it just, you hear the sound, you don't actually see a flash or anything, which always weirded me out. However, I think this was the last priority they had when they were putting a goddamn train in the middle of a busy street. All the while, Wally Fister had grips with giant bounces, like basically kind of covers up on top of skyscrapers to block out the sun. You can see that the building they're in, they actually have it in the dark, but if you look all the way down, you have to like kind of squint, but you can see actual light protruding at the end of the scene. It's nuts that they actually had to do that because one, that's a big safety issue and they probably had to go through a lot of work to make sure that was safe. At the same time, that's insane dedication. Well, that's one of the many reasons why Wally Fister won and 
I really wish the guy would go back to cinematography. Him and Nolan were just such bros. But now we haven't talked about the characters. I like every character in this movie, except JGL now. JGL at first was like, oh yeah, he's got the vests. JGL's cool. But then after re-watching it, he's the only one in this entire movie that barely has anything of a personality. He has very cool sequences, don't get me wrong. His entire elevator slash hallway fight sequence is the best part of the entire movie. He actually protrudes a bit of a character emotion at the very end of the movie when you can see he is visibly afraid about whether they will get out of the dreams with his plan with the elevator. Tom Hardy is very funny as Eames, but he also has a very quirkiness to him. I love Ken Wannabe's character in this because he's one of those big corporation goons who actually has a bit of smarts to him. Killian Murphy's character arc in this film is so well done. Tom Berenger, you've never seen a better performance out of this guy in the last 10 years. Ellen Page has a great insight in terms of being our representation of seeing Cobb, because everyone else is kind of like, eh, with him, whereas she's like, this dude's crazy. And speaking of Cobb, he has such weighted guilt on his conscience because of what happened with him and his wife, who I thought was very well played by Marion Coltard. Probably one of my favorite parts about this movie as the idea of our own twisted guilt, how we perceive other people's thoughts, emotions, and reactions to ourselves, uh, that very, very dark inner look at ourselves to the point where it can be toxic, to the point where it can almost kill us. That's a representation of actual people's emotions. It's not just some sort of weird dream guilt thing. It's an actual problem that some people have. But overall, the movie is just a fantastic ride. You are constantly engaged. The cinematography is capturing everything you need to. You're embedded in these characters. You're embedded in their struggle, their strife. And again, it's a heist movie, but you don't really recognize it until you actually really start looking at it. It also helps that I watched the Rick and Morty heist episode. I never realized how few heist movies I've seen. The few that I have seen, even Inception to a small extent, does follow that same hierarchy, that same structure of how heist movies work. Admittedly, because of Inception's concept that it surpasses the normal trope of a heist movie, it's far beyond that because it's not about stealing something, it's about implanting something. It's about putting in an idea. It also has to deal with time and how time works in a conscious, subconscious state. As well as all those little dream bits that he talks about that everyone's like, oh yeah, I recognize that. Oh yeah, I'll get that too. I like Inception. I love it. It's a fun movie. I watched it to death when I was younger. I haven't watched it as much recently, so it was really cool and refreshing to see it on the IMAX screen once again. I also feel that Inception represents the end of Nolan's banger trilogy, in which I mean is he had The Prestige, which was highly, highly underrated. It's probably one of my favorite movies that he's ever done. The Dark Knight, which, duh. And then this movie. Dark Knight Rises is okay. It has some problems. It's a very thematic film. It has a fantastic means of entertaining the audience, even when some of the stuff happening is kind of stupid. But I feel that these three films are pinnacle Nolan. If you ever wanted to watch anything of his, these three are it. I also really like Interstellar, but we'll talk about those another day. In the end though, I'm gonna give Inception a 7 out of 7. I don't think that was any surprise here. If you guys haven't got a chance to see the 10 year anniversary of Inception at an IMAX theater or any theater in your area, I would suggest you try to obviously be safe. It's really cool to relive this experience again. I would really highly suggest you watch the retrospective because Nolan says a lot of things about just how he felt with his skill at the time and that was how he was able to properly do Inception. Had he done it earlier, he would not have been able to do so. It's because of the challenges he put himself through with films like Batman Begins and The Dark Knight that he was able to take those lessons, take those challenges and put them to their full use and purpose in Inception. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. I'm gonna go wax my dome. My god, I do look like a bad guy. I'm sorry if I've looked like a douche this whole video. That was not the intention. I was just more so wanting to talk about how much I love vests. Anyways, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.